No, it is not gold and it is not silver. Believe it or not, these two metals do not have the greatest potential to skyrocket in price. But in this video, I'm going to explain which metal does and the reasons why as we explore. Before I tell you what metal does have the greatest potential to literally explode in price, and I'll define what that means exactly, um, let's talk a little bit about gold and silver. Gold is testing near highs again, even when, when it's with its latest pullback. You know, there is a lot of room for it to move down, I think probably more so than up at this point, at least through probably the end of the year as there is other forces at play and the dollar is extremely strong right now believe it or not and that's a discussion we can talk about in, in other videos and we have but nonetheless silver probably has the greatest potential uh, aside from this other metal to uh, dramatically increase in price i will i necessarily won't say it's going to explode but i think silver uh, very well could be positioned but there are a lot of things in the silver market that can work against its price moving up as well as the other direction. So we have to keep that in mind. It's been a very frustrating journey for silver stackers over the past 10 years since I've been in this community. But nonetheless, uh, there is another metal out there that I think we should be paying attention to. And you've heard me talk about it before. But before we get to that metal, I'm going to first tell you it's not rhodium. <laughs> That's right. Rhodium, I think, has already had its heyday. It already exploded in price uh, dramatically. In fact, I mean, I have one ounce of it, and many people are saying I should have sold at this all-time high. And I did. A, there's a whole playlist on that. I document my entire rhodium journey uh, with that, and we talk about it. So rhodium has already had its heyday. Palladium has had its heyday as well. It's on its way down. I think it has further to move down. So that leaves only one metal to explode in price, potentially. Uh, we're going to talk about it. And that is, yep, you guessed it, platinum. And for those of you familiar with my channel, and as somewhat of a disclaimer, you will know that I am indeed a platinum bull. Uh, and um, now I'm not a platinum pumper because I'm going to talk about both sides of the equation when I talk a little bit about what news has just been released that I think is going to bolster the case for a dramatic increase in prices in due course. Now, uh, a potential explosion in price very well could happen, and there's a greater potential for it with platinum than in any other metal right now, especially since the price has been pulling back the last couple of days as of the recording of this video. And of course, we saw a very dramatic pullback during the very beginning part of the pandemic when everything got smashed and squashed as everybody ran to the safety of the dollar. Uh, and that's what's been happening uh, on a very, very small scale recently too. But let's, let's, uh, let's uh, explore a little bit some of the options here as the markets continue to go round and round here. Uh, we are uh, going to be referencing an article here that has been released as a press release from the World Platinum Investment Council. Now that should clue you in as to, the, uh, as to what's going on here. The, the bias, there is, an, an, uh, there is a bias here, a very strong bias on two fronts. Number one, uh, the, this press release from the World Platinum Investment Council, much like the Silver Institute or the World Gold Council, you know, or the, you know, from other organizations that deal in precious metals, well, they're going to be bullish on these metals. Uh, and so you have to take that for a grain of salt to some extent. However, I believe this particular piece is nuanced enough that it gives us some things to think about. Um, and we have to think about all the different options here. So that's point number one of the bias. The number two point of the bias is my own bias towards platinum. I have been a platinum bull for a long time and have done a number of videos on platinum. I love to share my thoughts on platinum. These typically don't get the views that other uh, precious metal content get on my channel or even other channels. 
uh, but I just uh, I really love the metal. I think it's rare enough, but it's also has uh, has enough use, and the demand for it is is increasing. And that's part of what I'm going to be talking about here. I mean, the numbers are there, and I believe that uh, these numbers can be interpreted uh, multiple different ways. But for all intents and purposes, this means that uh, platinum probably has no choice but to go up in price at some level. Uh, even amongst uh, uh, periods of slight dips. So what's going on here? Well, we have got, uh, for the third consecutive quarter, global platinum demand rising, growing 31%, 519,000 ounces a year over year in the, in the second quarter of 2023. That's a strong year-on-year -year demand growth momentum in automotive, which has a 19% increase, about 136,000 ounces, and industrial demand up 12%. That's uh, 76,000 ounces. And if those numbers sound small to you, well, the platinum market is super tiny. Platinum is a very rare precious metal, but it's about half the cost of gold right now, which is why it's a bargain. And then you also have the other areas with regards to continued positive investment demand. Uh, meanwhile, refined platinum production uh, fell 4% year on year, as did auto catalyst recycling. And we know why that's happening because auto catalyst recycling has fallen because, well, people are trading in their cars less and less because there has been a shortage of automobiles, new automobiles because of the chip shortage that we've seen that is still plaguing us. And this is one reason why I think that platinum has a great potential for its price to literally explode. And again, stay tuned because I'm going to really define that word here for us because we hear it all the time. But we're going to take a look and I'm going to give my definition of it uh, as we go through this video. But uh, stay tuned. So we see in a market deficit because of the lack of auto catalyst recycling and even jewelry recycling is down as well. Uh, which led to a market deficit of 348,000 ounces for the second quarter of this year, marking Platinum's first two consecutive quarters of deficit since the second half of 2020. And we saw what happened. Uh, platinum prices started going up around that time. And so these events, which continued trends seen in the first quarter of 2023, have led to another upward revision of the deficit forecast for the full year to over 1 million ounces, the largest deficit on record in terms of both absolute ounces and as a percentage of annual demand. Total supply is expected to remain flat, aligned with the weak 2022 level of 7,224,000 ounces. That's down 31,000 ounces. In other words, that's 7 million ounces at the whole level, while demand is expected to increase significantly by 27%. For the rest of the year, that's a, uh, um, you know, that's eight thousand two hundred thirty. That's eight million, eight point two million ounces, essentially. The way they have these numbers in this press release is a little confusing, but nonetheless, strong quarterly increase in vehicle production is what's going to be added to existing drivers for Platinum's automotive demand growth. And so, Platinum automotive demand rose nineteen percent a year over year to eight hundred forty thousand ounces in the second quarter as semiconductor shortage continues to ease, leading to a healthy uplift in vehicle production. Global light-duty vehicles production increased 14% year-over-year, while heavy-duty vehicle uh, production grew by 18%. In spite of talks about a recession, there is demand for new vehicles. And that is something that probably, even if we get into a recession, is not going to ease by that much. And even if it does, well, that means supply will finally meet uh, the demand for the automotive sector and will remain constant for platinum because of that. So automotive and de platinum demand is being driven by higher by increased vehicle production in these areas. Um, and tighter Chinese emission standards for heavy-duty vehicles, which w came into effect just recently, will see a rise in demand for platinum as PGM-coded particulate filter systems are phased in. In other words, we're seeing more and more catalytic converters in China. These factors will lift 2023 global platinum automotive demand by 13%. So when we see that, as well as industrial demand forecast revise upwards as well, we're going to see uh, a totaled 
697,000 ounces in the second quarter, a 12% increase year over year, and its highest level since the third quarter of 2021. The chemical industry in particular saw an 87% year over year increase, about 109,000 ounces this quarter, uh, thanks to higher demand for platinum bearing catalysts from the paraxylene industry, which offset contractions in other areas of industrial demand. So looking at the year as a whole, the already record-breaking forecast for industrial demand has been revised even higher to 2.6 million ounces. This is in large due to capacity expansions in glass. That's right, uh, platinum is used in glass as well in chemical applications. This will counterbalance lower demand from the electrical and petroleum segments. Um, now before we continue to industrial, to investment demand, People are probably thinking, well, isn't palladium still used in gasoline catalytic converters? Yes, it is. It's a very slow transition, but the transition is growing to be uh, use more platinum because its price is cheaper. So as you see that, see that transition take place, well, uh, that means that uh, greater demand for platinum will overtake palladium in due course and offset any kind of... Uh, um, it, economic factors that would lead to less demand for certain applications that involve platinum and uh, and, and palladium as well too but you think about it uh, palladium is much more rare than platinum and so uh, when you start to see this shift and a greater demand and you start to see platinum being used and we very well could see platinum overtake palladium uh, and because of the demand and there's enough supply to be able to to, to make it work uh, for all of these applications that are out there. And uh, so what about investment demand? Well, in the previous quarter, the first quarter of 2023, we saw increased investors interest resulting in net positive investment demand of 154,000 ounces in the next quarter. Platinum ETF holdings grew by 155,000 ounces which is the largest quarterly increase since the third quarter of 20 and up 190,000 ounces since the start of the year with significant renewed interest from South African funds. ETF holdings are expected to soften during the rest of 2023 despite a fall in global bar and in coin investment of 26,000 ounces in the second quarter. So platinum coins and bars like what you see here, that demand is shrinking somewhat. But the industrial side is picking up and taking up the slack by a large margin. And uh, this might be the time to buy because you might see some premiums fall for platinum uh, bullion out there. So it's pretty amazing to see some of this stuff. So this will, uh, so when you have the first growth year over year, year over year jump, is likely to see this year jump in 2023. The first growth in bar and coin investment in three years driven by a return to positive net platinum investment in demand. The result will mean net investment demand of 386,000 ounces in 2023, according to their forecast uh, for the rest of the year. So the overall supply of platinum remains constrained. Uh, refined mine production declined 4%. About 65,000 ounces year over year in the second quarter of 23. And as increases from North America and Russia were heavily outweighed by a decline from South Africa. Following three consecutive quarters of declining supply, South African output improved this quarter, uh, reaching uh, one uh, over just over a million ounces. Nevertheless, this was still a 9% decline year on year, primarily due to processing asset maintenance in addition to disruptions due to ESCOM load curtailment. And in other words, it's electric electricity shortages and the like. And uh, we don't know how that's going to really bear out. Global recycling on platinum we know has declined. So there's a lot of things that are uh, really more bullish on, uh, or I guess the it's the news is is that platinum is in a deficit and really there's no news there to some extent but it's greater than they had expected now what is the opposite end of this this is that the very fact that we could see a massive economic downturn but it would have to be massive in order for platinum's price to fall by that much 
because of the other mitigating factors that have led to a disruption in the supply chains leading from the that we're still reeling from, such as ship shortages and the like. And the automotive industry is is one of those where during economic downturns, it's not affected by quite as much, it seems, strangely enough. Uh, but uh, even if that does take a downturn, I believe that what we have been seeing and the continued supply deficit and mining down, it's going to have a negligible impact. And I believe we'll still see a somewhat of a deficit, which means that prices will probably still rise, which makes platinum fairly and uh, fairly recession proof, at least to an extent. Now, I believe the prices are low now. Anything under $1,000 is good for platinum. But what does it mean if the price were to explode? If mining, if m other uh, problems in the mine in South Africa and everything bears out and there's enough demand and the economy doesn't go south quickly, I believe we could see an explosion in price. What does an explosion mean? A large increase in price in a short amount of time. And we're talking about a tune to the tune of 5% plus per day for multiple days. And we see the price of platinum shoot upwards and explode over the course of a couple of days, a week, and maybe even a month. And we could see that. And it's happened before in the history of platinum's price. We see it just rocket up in certain times. And we've seen that happen back in 1986. We've seen it happen back uh, right at the beginning of the financial crisis, at the very beginning of the recession, where it shot up. And we, we also saw it fairly recently in February of 2021, where it rocketed up to about uh, t almost 1260 bucks or so. So there are times where it does shoot up and rocket it up fairly quickly. And then when it comes back down, where there are higher lows. And we're seeing that kind of much like silver in regards in some aspects. So something to think about. But let me know what your thoughts are. This is a very fascinating topic to me. Now, I would love to hear contrarian opinions about this too. Platinum is a fringe precious metal. These are just my thoughts and opinions on the metal. It is really not a metal to, to uh, really be stacking, even though I'm kind of stacking it. I think see it as more of a speculative play, an investment sort of. Um, uh, but I do think it does have great potential. But many of you may disagree with it. Or it may be too risky for you to uh, stack any uh, amount of it, any appreciable amount of it. So let me know what your thoughts are. Hope you found this video informative and insightful and educational. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for watching and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.